Okay, well, let's uh, start with initiative then. For the record, what alignment? Do you have an idea of alignment? Right? Yeah, everyone is asleep except for Varen. Varen notices okay, the ghoul. Don't get my bonuses. Varen notices the ghoul, and then uh, it's initiative. For the record, do I have an idea what alignment Darlene, Marjorie, Marla, Carla are? Um, probably just neutral. Damn. They're just peasants. Okay. They don't really have any. You're trying to convert them? Eventually, but uh, there's an interesting situation that would have required them to be good for me not to kill them with, so uh, I'll have to come up with another idea. Oh, okay, you're going to use some kind of exalted uh, spell? Yeah, the purified stuff. Yeah. Purify is an awesome one, but you hang out in a party with neutral people. Uh, they'll learn the hard way. On the plus side, they take half damage if they're neutral. Exactly. I'm chaotic good. Oh, I thought you were chaotic neutral. No, because I went with uh, Tamora and Tempest. And to, uh, Tamora is a chaotic good god, I believe. Are you still so. good, considering you willingly took the hit for that goblin? Well, I guess it was a one situation, so probably not a huge hit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure when we started, you said you were neutral. I don't Let specifically check. care. Let me see if I wrote it down. I did not write it down. Nothing has happened so far in this game that is, like, uh, irredeemable, so I'm not overly worried about it. So I can't remember if I went with uh, Chaotic Neutral for Tempest. I'm pretty sure you said you were Chaotic Neutral. I know that uh, Kalen is Chaotic Neutral, because he's Malar. And I think Manfrey said he was chaotic neutral. And I said, fuck you guys. We're going good. Uh, fuck. Let me see if I can't find the god list. But you guys can Yeah, continue. on my morality scale, I've got the three of you as true neutral, or pure neutral. And then uh, Varen is at uh, five points uh, for good. So he's at the top end of good. I know I was for sure chaotic something because I wasn't going to pull what I did with uh, Agen. Yeah, you're chaotic neutral. Yeah. I'm back. Did that five points include sparing the goblins that attacked us? or? Yeah, because we did that um, after the fact. Okay. Cool. I, I can remember. Oh, fuck. I get a bonus to my spells. I'm a dumbass. I'm gonna add yep, you get much. plus one uh, competence bonus on healing spells and plus one hit point on uh, heal checks. Oh, it's even written in my... I'm just, I can't read. Okay, cool. I totally forgot about that. I always forget about the, the perks. Like, I wrote the chart and I've referenced it several times in the game and I still forget about it. Yeah, I was chaotic neutral. You can obviously... Uh, choose to be good just by doing good things just like you can choose to be evil by doing evil things you get bonuses to Coralon for being good so that's an incentive to be good but you also get bonuses for uh, being uh, neutral for, neutral for Tempest, Tempest. Uh, the evil real... guys are great because you can max them out in a second flat just by fucking murdering some random people for yeah, Temp Tempest, <laughs> Tempest, and Cor quote unquote bad. Tempest and, and Coralon don't really need. You don't need to follow their alignments because I mean, as a barbarian, if I'm critting, then I'm fine. And especially for Tempest, once I get to fifth and sixth level, if I fucking start one hitting or fucking doing it by myself, then that'll bump my points a lot too. So. Yep. But being um, anarchic gives you an extra point, and being both alignments gives you an extra point as well. So you get one for being chaotic, one for being good, one for being anarchic, and one for being chaotic good. 
So one, you're going to get the extra point in either way, because you can't be both chaotic good and chaotic neutral. So it's just which side you want that extra point on. I'll probably go, then I'll probably go chaotic good, because that gives me more bonuses for Tamora, and she's harder to level up, so. Okay, well, I will move you over to the good side. I feel like that's not a good reason to be good, but I will support you regardless because now I can convert you easily. I was gonna say Sunni is chaotic good, so that's your best bet. It's chaotic exalted, but yeah. That I mean, you can't tie goblins to your waist and throw them at bears. Well, what he did was highly suspect, but I know, in the I, end, I I'm, I'm in just the end, he didn't actually more. cause any harm. Yeah, I know. I, it, he hasn't done anything actually, also I can't give him actual grief for it, so I'm just trying to use the best I got. Fair enough. Uh, does Deline look in danger, or do ghouls go after like things with the most life force, i.e. this guy? Like, how, how do undead... Yes, roll you okay. rolled well on your check, didn't you? Uh, 23. Yeah, that's good enough to know. Uh, ghouls will... They're free-wheeled undead, so they can make choices. But normally, free will undead will go for the thing with the strongest life force. And that would be doubly so in the case of ghouls, because the primary thing they want is to eat you, and the strength of your life force is basically how much food you are. Okay fair so it's like a thief trying to find the guy who has the most money the guy with the biggest purse probably has the most money respect that so that is exactly what he will do move up and rip chunks off of uh, Adorix yeah at least you don't need a perception check True that, and since he's prone, he gets to automatically hit you. Oh, fucking awesome. I mean, you're unconscious, prone. I feel like you're going to get hit regardless. Probably. True that. All right, John, roll a couple ones here for me. No, no, you automatically get hit. Oh, that's, that's what automatically I, means. Well, I thought I thought you still had to roll. No, like, you wouldn't expect a need to roll if there was someone unconscious on the ground and you wanted to hit him, right? Fair enough. If he, takes, if he takes a full round action to coup de gras you, he gets an automatic critical. So he does d3 and d6 plus 2. Plus 2, really? Wow. So you take three, three. So I take zero. And eight. So I take five damage total. Got it. He rips delicious chunks off of you and you still have more flesh. Varen, you're up. Um, what action is it to wake up Manfrey? Uh, depending upon how you want to do it, um, you can do it as a move action without any harm. You can kick him as like a swift action. Do one point of damage to him, we'll wake him up. Oh, uh, re relevant question: the, He's he's staring apart a guy next to me. Can I just make a perception check to already be awake, or is it? I guess rounds technically aren't sequential; they're simultaneous. So never mind. Yeah, at this point, you're unconscious. On your turn, you can roll your perception check. Fair enough. All right, so I take one damage and I'm awake. Yeah, Assuming that that's what Varen's gonna do. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna kick her as I move up. Um... As oh, I okay. move up, I'm going to move up. Well, I want to try a purified burning hands. Now that Adorex is good? 
Yeah, yeah, I, I wasn't gonna do this if it wasn't good, though. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. DC. Oh, we should uh, add that competence bonus to good spells, too. Because that would make sense. That would be nice. Thank you very much. And then that gives me something extra I can add to uh, Vile Evil. as well. Yeah. Uh, okay. And with that, DC is uh, 19. I love rolling two ones, Jesus. Are you aware that the exalted bonus is plus two? I thought I was still at add the good threshold with the five. Yes, you are. You haven't got your six points yet. Um, yeah. I was just pointing out that getting to exalted actually has a mechanical bonus for you. Oh yeah, because you just said the 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 good spells. That would be nice. Then I do have a question. How many HD was that uh, dragon? Dragon was eleven. Why? And we uh, okay. Never mind. We have a total of nine hit dice. We don't have to keep a note on that. That's very cool. Oh, I was just asking about the Tempest one because it's like hold a position in battle against odds two to one. So I was just curious if he was double our hit die. Yeah, it's pretty hard to hold two to one uh, at third level. Very fair. But if Manfrey had fled, you'd almost do it because you'd be 6 to 11. Yep. Okay, uh, Adrix, you're up. Uh, if, if I try to stand up, that's going to provoke an opportunity, isn't it? Uh, yep, but you can tumble to your feet. Oh, wait, I do have a really good acrobatics. Uh, nine, and I do have a plus two, I think, to my acrobatics check. Yep. If you don't mind, could you roll the reflex as well? Yeah, I was just looking it up. Oh, sorry. Damn, he passes. Well, six points. Yeah, the nice thing about ghouls is they get the uh, a negative energy defense, and they have a high charisma. Most things just get plus one for it. Oh, okay. Does a 19 let me stand up? Uh, Ghoul's three hit dice, and it's, I think, DC 15 to stand up. So, uh, yep, that would be enough. Okay, cool. Uh, and that takes half my movement, correct? No, as a tumble check, that is your movement. Oh, that okay. That's fine, then. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fucking swing away with my I feel hammer. like I have to ask, though. Um... Didn't you hit him three times? As, uh, what, didn't you talk about a paralysis thing? How does that work? Is oh, yeah. You can tax? roll your paralysis save. Fortitude? Yep. DC 13. Bonus. Fortitude is that. Make it. And, and then roll the other two. Oh, the other. Oh, you're right. Shit. Oh, so close. Okay, then you can roll your disease safe. Another fortitude? Yep. Did you take off your disease icon? He did when he was trying to find the numbers for the tracking of the, the vigor. It just got oh, the confusion. Do I still have disease from the cave? Yep. Wait, I need to roll my disease safe too. Well, okay, you can so roll sad. it in the morning when you get up. We did sleep, oh, so I got. We got my luck back, which is good. And then path, hey. there's no bonuses to my attack mod right now. Did that not roll? Fuck it. I fucked it up. 
Um, so shit, it didn't work. What didn't work? Uh, I had my fucking macro that I thought worked earlier, but I guess it didn't. So, so it's just a plus eight to hit. Oh, what was the d20 plus 13? That was my uh, acrobatics. Oh, yeah, okay. And I don't think that hits him. It does not. Nope. Of course, I roll fucking really decently, and then as soon as I fucking go to attack, it's like, hey, no, bitch. Okay, then we're on to Manfrey. Uh, so I'm no longer asleep. I'll get up, uh, cast Cloud of Knives, and five step over here. I move closer to Doom. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta test out my new knives. Gotta test out my new spell. Okay. That's my turn. Then we're back to initiative. And now everyone gets my awesome auras. Shame, I only get the the purify uh, once. Am I able to like add? So how does it work? Like if I don't prepare it right, then I you get to do it spontaneous. once a day for free, spontaneously, mm. and then you can use a second level spell slot to power it if you want. Okay, cool. I've. Okay, and then the spellcraft thing is just to use it without increasing the spell. Yeah. Speed. Okay. Yeah, if you can make the DC thirty-five check, you could do it without uh, using a second level spell. Got it. Okay. What are your second level spells? Uh, cleric side is no your mage spells, the ones that you'd be giving oh, up wait. to do burning hand. Lesser fireball and lesser celerity. Oh, okay. Okay, well, the ghoul will continue to attack Adorex. Fifteen hit on you? It is not. Okay, Varen, you're up. Uh, I will once again do the Burning Hands. DC is 19. Uh, better. Less nice. better. Gonna roll your reflex save, Manfrey. Oh yeah. Burning hands, you're burning me. Make better life choices. Sixteen. Both uh, alignment wise and uh standing adjacent to where I'm blasting the ground. Please take four damage. You monster. I'm sorry. Did you roll four positive. fours on that? Oh, I think Burning Hands is D6s, or D4s. Uh, it is a D6, but the Purified, when you're fighting undead, increases the, the dice. Oh, the okay. DC, oh, nice. Okay. That is really sweet. Yeah, that's why I kept asking the D. <laughs> I was really happy when we found a ghoul. Well, you could have used it on the dragon, too. Uh, it's only undead and evil outsiders, sadly, for that. Oh, okay. Well, there's lots of undead in this campaign, so. I love it. Regardless of which uh, path you take, uh, there's undead everywhere. Perfect. Okay, Adorix, you're up. Alrighty, I'm gonna go ahead and hit that attack. How late are we going tonight? Battle hit. I'm off he tomorrow. Has... 
What does PD stand for? Paralyzing damage disease. Reduction. Oh, okay. So he takes full fucking damage. Yeah, ghouls and whites are just hit point tanks. Alright, so he's dead then. Oh, did you kill him outright? Yeah, he had 10 HP left. Oh, yeah, he failed the save against the 16 points of fire death. Yeah. glad I got to use that ability. Well, that was short-lived. Was there a response on how late we're playing tonight? Uh, I figure normal time. Okay. Okay, so... Uh... So you guys can rest for the remainder of the night and uh, continue on in the morning. Okay, and it was just the one ghoul. I didn't even get to shoot daggers at anything. Love it. <laughs> this sucks. I love that. You I'm sorry, man. <laughs> You woke up, got kicked I, in the face, got blessed with fire, casted your spell. I want to save my spell in case we get attacked in the night. We get attacked in the night. Oh, we already killed it. I, I should have daggered Varen. No. <laughs> Can't you dagger in the first round? Uh, it says at the beginning of your turn. You don't cast a spell at the beginning of your turn, so I assume not. Each round is a reaction at the beginning of your turn. You can release one of these knives at any target within 30 feet that you can see. Fair enough. I think that makes it kind of a lot worse, but, you know, worth a try first. Yeah, if it was a tougher encounter, it might have been uh, a more valuable uh, spell. Just keep in mind, anything you use now is for your following day's uh, yep. group of spells. Okay, when you get up in the morning, uh, is there anything you need to do? Did you already heal for the rest, Adorex, or not yet? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay, then what's your con? Oh yeah, I already did heal for the rest. When we rested, I did add that HP. Fine. Um. Yeah, we'll do a lesser figure. Okay, so I will be back up to 42 over time. He can technically do that on you before you go back to sleep. Yes. Uh, do you guys have to roll your saves now? Yeah, in the morning you can each roll... Save. No, you have to roll your uh, disease save. Yeah, I, I did roll that. You told me to re-roll that when I woke up, so I re-rolled it and I passed. Yeah, I but that was your uh, ghoul fever save. This is oh. your filth fever, fever save. Well, because he attacked me three uh, times. That's actually twelve, but uh, I still think that fails. Yeah, he attacked you three she times. Attacked. So you had to roll three so paralyze. Long. Every time he wounds you, you have to roll a paralyze save. And then he does bite, uh, does his disease. This is the disease we got way back from okay. the rats. Gotcha. So you do not have ghoul fever, but you still have filth fever, so in the morning you need to roll that safe. Gotcha, okay. Does an 11 fail, and do we know that they're contracted to a disease yet or no? Uh, the 11, I think, might fail. I don't remember. It's actually what a 12. Fail. Oh, well, the 12 might succeed. Uh, I forget what the DC is. All 
I remember I had like two extra hits from it, so I think my DC was higher anyways. Oh, okay, yeah. The DC is 12. And if you fail it, then you would take uh, D3 Dex and D3 Con and immediately know that you are infected. Uh, does anyone have a uh, plus two luck I can borrow? Wait, I have luck beats. Do I have that one yet? No, I don't. Um, I quickly cast uh, Dark Vision on myself. <laughs> I will use my luck on that. Appreciate it. Did you need a two or a one? A plus two. Otherwise, I'd have used my luck. So I thought I said that was a 12, right? Don't you need a 13 or... Uh, I thought I needed so I think the base DC is twelve and then I got hit two extra times that increased. Oh the two extra times, two, right? Okay. Sorry, yeah, my bad. Okay. So it's a festering wound. Arguably though, it might be a good idea to succumb to it once so we can just use heal checks on you in the night. Yeah, I guess I could. Or unless it's a... Uh, how many... It's just three successful pass, saves right? to ignore it, and this is the second one, so... Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's bad just to get rid of it. What was Adorix? Did he pass? Uh, let me fucking roll real quick. Fortitude save, correct? Yep. Yeah, I pass. Nice. Two down, one to go. Okay. Through the night, could I... On my watch, would it have been possible to like, use the stars or something like... See... Where we are? Uh, do you have knowledge geography? Uh, I do. Okay, you can roll a geography check. Should roll in a moment. There. Clean. Um... From what you can tell, you're kind of eyeballing it, um, you would think that you are uh, a fair bit south of, I assume, what you would think is home, the Elven uh, lands. Okay. Fair. So, so from Ridgevale... Oh, I didn't put the scale on this. Somehow it's still feet. So, uh, one, There's two, three, there. four, five, six, seven. So you're almost 200 miles south of Elven Lands. Yeah. So that gives you. A a little bit of context to where you are. You know you're somewhere south of Blygler, Blygler City. Uh, you know you are east of Blygler City. And you know you're about 200 miles south of uh, uh, My Tail or whatever it's called. Okay. Okay. That's about what I was expecting. Cool. Thank you. Would the CSCF, if it, is it CSF or CSCF? It's critical fail, critical success. Okay, so CF comes first. Doesn't matter. So the way it turns blue is if any number, like, so the CS is, and you're setting all the numbers that are critical successes. CF is critical failures. If any number is in the two sets, like let's say you have CF 10, and critical success 10 then if you roll a 10 it's both and it's blue okay it's like if you roll 2d6 for your greatsword and you roll a 6 and a 1 it'll come up blue as 7 but if you roll a 3 and a 4 which is also 7 it doesn't come up blue 
Yeah, like if you roll a six up. and a two, it's eight, but it'll come up green. Gotcha. Like yeah, all that shit you just rolled there. You rolled an eighteen, which is a critical fail for you. Well, that's the thing is when I put CSCF, it it came up as red. Because, because I had CSCF so on CS. it. Yeah, CS is one thing. CF is another. There is no CSCF. It's CS18. You'd have to do CS18. CF. Yeah, you have 20 CF CS. I don't know if you can do that with the uh, greater than brackets either. Just yeah, notice over his have. 26. You can see what he's well, got. Well, because it was, it, it was working. Like, if you look at the 28, or if you look, the one I yeah, did way so, earlier worked with it. Well, well, the reason is because what you have in the last one is all 18, 19, 20, and 1, 2, 3 are going to be red. That's all you have in the last okay, one. Okay, so if I wanted to have uh, the 18 and 19 be blue, I'd have to do CS greater than, greater than 18 and CF greater than 18. Correct. No, Separately, you, you I can't don't... just go CS, CF. Okay, let, let's start with the fact that CF means critical failure. Yes, I know that. So and you CS don't means want critical it, success. Yeah, but you don't want critical failures on things that are criticals. I'm trying to make it blue. Why do you want it blue? For 18 and 19, because that's my luck bonus. Okay, I just wanted to confirm that because your sword is 18, 19, so you want those to come up green. Well, I, I only crit on a 20 as of right now. Because where... you're not using your sword. This is why I was asking. I don't have a sword. I understand. That's my point. He's okay. talking about future proofing it for. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that you weren't okay. setting your macro up to not tell you you have a crit. No, no, no. I'm trying to make the 18 and 19 blue for nope, right now. That's totally fair. Yeah, so you'd want CS greater than 18, and you want to do CF 18, CF 19. If you do CF greater than 18 like you have there, what it'll do is it'll also make 20 blue instead of 20 green. So you want to specify for the CF 18, CF 19. So you don't okay. have to worry about that. And then once you get a court blade, you can switch that and put the, yeah. the two extras for your luck for on 17, 17 and 16. 16. Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense. Because what had happened is for, when I got it to work earlier, I just had it as CS19, CS18. But as soon as I did CSCF, that's when it started making it so my macro wouldn't work. Yeah, because when you have CSCF like that, it just CS nothing. And then CF greater than 18. Is all yeah, that. that makes sense. I just put oh, sorry, each number I in. Time out of that. Okay, there we go, yeah. That's what I needed, perfect. Now I can save it and use it. Because it actually fucking works. If you shorten your uh, damage to just DMG, uh, then you can... It'll all, all be one line. one line, you're right. Same with attack, just put ATT1. So, uh, obviously, uh, we needed rest, so I didn't question it at night, but um, we did get attacked by a fucking ghoul at night in Goblin Territory, near pretty close to their capital from when we t first talked to their goblins. Not, like, right next door, but at the same time. Uh... Don't they, like, we already established schools can create other, is that what they do? They create yep. the other schools, so. Uh... Well, one thing that you might want to consider is that you know you are south of Blygler City, and you're 200, km, 200 miles south of uh, the Elves, which means you're not in Blygler, you're in Vangernash. So do we just want to head north till we get to Blangler? Well, is Vangernash the orc place, if I remember? Vangernash or? is the orc place. Oh, and we don't want to go to orc place. Are these the uh, the Grumshore? Uh, 
Orcs well, fighting. for the most part, it doesn't really matter what kind of orcs they are. You're an elf, I'm a half-elf. They're yeah. not going to like us. Yeah, you're, um, you're not covered under the treaty. Well, well fair. I, I'm more concerned about the, the presence of ghouls um, rather than uh, the civilians in this territory. Okay. Um, um, I don't remember exactly what information you have, uh, Varen, but I know Jagat knows an awful lot about the history of... Um, Orcas in yeah. this area, so one of the uh, significant features of the history of Ridgevale is it was originally an enclave of Orcus orcs. That's what started the War of the Four Kingdoms. Yeah, I wasn't sure if we'd know that for this one. You might um, not. I'm just giving you context. The, okay. There are undead all over the place in this area because this area has had a dominant Orcus uh, presence for centuries. Like, uh, here, I'll move you guys to the map so you have some context. Question becomes, do we care? Do we want to do anything? Oh, Vanganesh is really close to the Blackbird. Jesus, okay. There's no real border between them, is there? Well, there is a technical border, but there's basically, this is how far you're willing to go before you're outnumbered by your enemy. Like, Tink is definitely in Vanganesh, and Gradle is on the border. You go north of Gradle as an orc, you want to make sure you have enough people with you that uh, the goblins don't decide you're going to be dinner. And same thing. If you go south of Gradle as a, um, as a goblin, you have to concern yourself about what the orcs are going to do about that. But yes, there's no formal line like there is in uh, Himkeldur. I got to update this map because this is the old map. And where are we exactly? Well, you guys don't know where you are, but the, the information that you have is that you are um, 200 uh, mile, about 200 miles south of Lonefield. Uh, I think you were like three or four or five days away from Blagler. Um, and that's pretty much all you know. Like, you have a rough idea where you are. Uh, you're not deep in orc territory, because there aren't, the hills aren't crawling with orcs where you currently are. So, you would have to assume that you're a fair ways east of Vangernash. But that's interesting then, isn't it? The considering we came across goblins. I, I guess they're not hostile to each other. Well, this is, this is one of the things, is where you are is along the river, which is the border uh, for the orcs. Like this, even though technically the red line is the end of the treaty uh, relations with the orcs, the river is an issue for the orcs. The river, the orcs don't like being on the other side of the river because it means that they are cornered. When they the invaded... information we have... So with the information we have, we know we can just go east. Uh, yeah, you've always assumed that going east was your general best option. Okay. You know that well, south yeah. is water, so when you get to the water, you just follow the water over to the east. Um, but if you just travel east far enough, you'll either hit Himkaldur or water. I'm also seeing this land for hill giants, though. Yeah, you um, don't want to go too far that way and into hill giant territory. But at this point, way. you don't really have that much context. Like, yeah. if you're going uh, east from here, you're not going to hit hill giants. East from here, you're not going to hit hill giants. It's only if you're down here that you're going to walk into hill giants. 
as soon as you hit the river, you'll have a very good idea of where you are. Yeah. So maybe Maybe going northeast is the best option? Yeah, you could go northeast. And each hex is a day, correct? Yeah, each hex is 24 miles. Okay. The scale on this map is incorrect. And so it's, which, if we just go northeast and hit the river, then we know we can follow the river to a point where, because, I mean, eventually we'll hit trails that lead to a town east of the river. Well, the big issue with the river is that there aren't any crossings for the river. So, when you hit the river, you can go north to Blygler or south to Southvale, but there's no point along that route where you can see anything on the other side of the river. You'd have to cross the river and then start uh, going cross-country just looking for stuff. So maybe we... Depending upon where you're coming across, um, Highside is the closest uh, settlement. So if you go northeast, uh, you're more likely to miss Highside and add two extra days to your journey through the hills. Um, yeah, I mean, crossing the river shouldn't be too bad. We can just make a raft. It's not like the river is that treacherous. How guess. wide is the river is the question? Uh, depending upon uh, where you cross, it's uh, 20 to 30 feet. Oh, yeah, it ain't terrible. Yeah, we can just use you to chop down some trees and it'll be fine. Yeah, that's true. Right now, we don't have a huge... It's very unlikely we'd hit the hill giants. And we haven't come across orcs. That's just the undead. That's a bit concerning. But... That should be fine. If it's common in this area, then I'm not as worried as some... Like, I was worried we were being chased through the surface by our captives. Versus... Well, the thing is, at this point, you would have two full days head start on your pursuers. So unless you stop for two days, they're not going to overtake you. Yeah. Because you guys traveled for a day out, and then they showed up the next morning, so they came right after you. But it would take at least another day for that troop to catch you and bring you back to the keep. So two days would pass before the orcs in the keep would even start to question where the hell did our uh, strike force go. And at that point, they have to make a choice about sending someone else out after you. Yeah, fair. So as long as you keep moving, you should be able to stay ahead of the orcs at least until you get to some kind of obstacle like the river. Makes sense. Okay. So, sounds like we got a plan then? Yep. Hypothetically, if I wasn't paying attention, what's the plan? We're going east still. Uh, Just be on the... There's a small risk of hill giants, so Adox will be going first. And, um, yeah. Uh, I feel like these hill giants would, uh, crush us pretty badly, but yeah, let's go for it, I guess. Low risk. Very low risk. Unlike orcs, hill giants, uh, are not very numerous. Yeah, Uh, I agree. You you, you could walk right through a hill giant's hunting territory, and he could be there hunting, and he's five miles away from you. He doesn't even know you're there. Fair enough. Unless he smells juicy, juicy elf meat. 